Some people are asking for a new Avengers movie, but here's the team up nobody knew they wanted. Between them, they've got everything. They really respect the lore, the IPs, and the stories that they're taking part in. The cartoon was made 85 years ago. Therefore, it's extremely dated. Big focus on her love story with a guy who literally stalks her. Weird, weird. But most of all, they respect the audience. They are probably just having a really hard day. Yes. And I am putting out a movie. Stay graceful <laughs> and ignore the hate. Hello. <laughs> Why would you need to listen to your audience's opinions? Who knows? A surprisingly common attitude among actors who think they get paid by studios and not the audience. But this is from Variety's Actors on Actors series. And while some have said this is a, a change in tone, their apology tour. The fan base is so huge, yeah. so dedicated. Mm -hmm. I'm one of them. I think it's more that it's difficult to be as spiteful as normal when you're spending 41 minutes desperately trying to crawl up each other's arse. Both of you are just like quintessential beautiful souls. First of all, nobody could have done it better. It's your voice, you're just a powerhouse. Given an award for most expressive eyes in Hollywood, it would go to you. Yesterday I was watching the film and I was in tears every time you opened your mouth. Because it's not the first time we've seen this kind of interview where things are phrased a little bit differently when they're done to another actor rather than a journalist. All of the people were angry. Like. <sighs> Those people. Very it's just that the actors are so busy praising each other in some sort of whirlwind of narcissism. It's people that we need to educate, love into awareness. Love them in the right direction. It's just that in this, they don't have the journalist on the sidelines with little devil wings and a trident prodding them, going, go on, be evil, go on. Your version of Snow White, it's more of a 2022 version of Snow White. What did you mean by that? Who literally stalks her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Attack the fans for us. Give us a headline. Weird. Weird. Super weird. So we Super weird. So I think it just goes to show that it's also true for actors that no matter how much you hate the media, you don't hate them enough. But this interview has so many contradictions within it. Movies were so successful when they came out because they captured the human emotion so well. The cartoon was made 85 years ago. Therefore, it's extremely dated. They're very good at what they do, which is why they've been around for 100 years. Dated when it comes to women being in roles of power and what a woman is fit for in the world. Which is why they've been around for a hundred years. And does definitely uh, rephrase some of the things which have been said before. It's, it's you know, a, a bit different story-wise. She's not gonna be dreaming about true love. She's dreaming about becoming the leader she knows she can be. <laughs> Snakes, of course. So if we are being a little bit more self-aware about what we say to regenerate our image. A, a bit different story-wise. It's really not about the love story at all. All of Andrew's scenes could get cut. Who knows? It's Hollywood, baby. Uh, I'm not sure it's working. As what you have here are Variety's videos from just before the interview. As you can see, their views are very varied, with everything from 2.4k to 10k, and the odd one that pops off at like 422, 268. But then you hit the Actors on Actors series, where it immediately kicks off with 1.1 million views. Then you got 4.5 million, 1.4 million, and then you hit Halle Bailey and Rachel Zegler's with 372. Wow, chicka, wow. Just means that our stories are worth telling, and I think the success review wise of our film shows that our stories are worth telling. We're literally talking a third of the standard views for this series so far. People were really interested in these videos until they appeared, and then it went up by 50% in the next one. It's very difficult to regenerate your image when nobody wants to hear what you've got to say. And I was in tears every time you opened your mouth. Perhaps it's because they think you don't really mean it and you're just trying to save your career. I don't know. I don't know. It just seems really weird to me that people are interested in videos about Rachel Ziegler just until she appears in one. But the interview starts in a really weird way where we go through all of the award shows where we've met before. We met at the Met. Yeah. You look so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. I met you at this event. I saw your family here. It was great to see you here because we didn't know anyone else. And every That's time so I see cool. you, it's like, oh, thank goodness, a familiar face. Yeah. When I saw you and your sister. Yes. And we took a photo. Yeah. Oh, and then there was the Disney event, and that was great because we're both princesses. Because we saw each other at D23, too. Yes. And oh, by the way, it's amazing to be in this room with you because I've never met you before. Because you and I don't get to be in the same room very often. Ever. But every that's time so I see great. you, it's like, oh, thank goodness, a familiar face. Honestly, no idea what that's about. But my favorite bit is where we open up with appreciation for the IP, talking about how great it is. There's a massive pressure that you place on yourself. The fan base is so huge, so dedicated. Mm -hmm. 
I'm one of them. How they mean so much to the audience, and there's so many people that like them. Oh god, this is an iconic thing that people really care about. I don't want to mess this up for anybody, yeah. including myself. These things made Disney, and that's why I am so privileged to be a part of it. I love everything that the Disney company has put out yeah. in the past a million years, a hundred years this yeah. year. I was scared of the original cartoon. I think I watched it once and then I never picked it up again. Talk about counting your blessings and and thanking whatever it is that brought me here. It all sounds wonderful until they start talking about why they feel so privileged to be part of it. All the pictures are out there of little me in, yeah, in my Snow White saw, that's gown. Right. And then same for you, being an amazing Latina woman as Snow White. Now there were multiple answers they could have given. It could have just been about money, which, you know, probably would have been honest, at least for some people. In this case, it seems to be for self-aggrandizement. I just was sobbing any yeah. time a video of them react and say, she looks like me. Like... Yeah. Which then opens up to full-blown narcissism. You just want to do right by your community. And I know that Snow White is a huge moment for them and obviously for my community it's a huge moment look i know this is a major ip but have you ever considered how much i would bring to it it's been around for a hundred years but they've never seen anybody like me before you want to know the only thing that could be greater than an ip with a massive audience that is a load of people looking at me when the little mermaid trailer came out and all of these young children being so happy that she's black and going one day i could be as marvelous as her because sometimes yeah. that can be very overwhelming obviously you welcome it in because it's a beautiful moment it meant so much to the rest of the world i was sobbing i saw a video of them react and say she looks like me to see me getting paid for my job these babies were like armor for me in a way oh my gosh this is the only validation i need i don't think there's anything more moral just and right anything those children can look forward to more than seeing me on the stage and going one day if i try really hard i can be as good as she is you know i'm like oh my god she's gonna freaking murder it Thanks, and man. you did yesterday i was watching the film and i was in tears every time you opened your mouth now at one point halle bailey was incredibly offensive to rachel zegler being an amazing latina woman as snow white she's half polish and nobody mentions that it that it's horrible you would have thought rachel would have been as proud as a father's side as she is of her mother's side but you know it's not really beneficial in hollywood is it so you why mention that? It would have been a better defense for Snow White, though, if you ever want to use it. You, you can have that one for free. I really hope this meeting is done in an aircraft hangar, because it's the only way you're going to fit their heads through the door. Egos this large have rarely ever been seen outside Hollywood. But there, it's normal, you know, because have you ever considered just how much I mean to my community? You just want to do right by your community. And I know that Snow White is a huge moment for them. And obviously for my community, it's a huge moment. I know all you little people over there. You, you're just yourselves. You're just individuals. But I, I I am an entire community. I was just in tears. I, I was sobbing over the fact that they felt like they could see themselves in me. I speak for all of them. I represent everybody. Snow White is a huge moment for them, as is the Hunger Games. I mean so much to them because you will never understand the doors that I have opened. Revolving door and not just I opened one door and one person walked through. Yeah. Like. I mean, some people may say that I was falsely inflated to a position that I didn't deserve, but I was just smashing down walls, opening doors that absolutely weren't closed for a reason. It's, it's you know, a, a bit different story-wise. And now I've smashed open their doors. There's far more room in Hollywood or the Polish. And I hope that it's not one of those moments that we hear about in the news where it's like, oh, the first in amount of years. And now I've opened up the doors. We don't just want one person walking through. 25 years from now, it's a revolving door and not just, I opened one door and one person walked through. Yeah. Like, yes, now Rachel has smashed open the doors for her community. She won't stop until Miles Morales is Polish. But nothing beats when they start talking about the controversy that they've both been in. They are probably just having a really hard day. Yes. And I am putting out a movie. Amen. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> ah, yes. Don't you understand? It's, it, it's all the audience's fault. It, it couldn't be them. It couldn't be them causing the problem. Big focus on her love story with a guy who literally stalks her. Weird. Weird. Do you speak the language? Does it matter? Does it matter? Do you eat the food? Does it matter? Or <laughs> I mean, yes, they, they did come out and both attack the IPs or entirely replace a beloved character with themselves for their own ego. And obviously for my community, it's a huge moment. But you see, it's not their fault. It's everyone pointing out the problems whose fault it is for some reason. That's gaslighting. That's what it is. Like this, this, we're the victims. 
feel bad for us. That's what that is. It's a very weird conversation where the people causing the problems are then talking to the people who are pointing out the problem and then complaining that it's the response to their action, which is the original problem. Now, if you're doing something wrong and somebody tells you you're doing something wrong, it's still your fault. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly that. And ignoring people, calling you out on your own bad behavior, it, it doesn't make your bad behavior any better. You and I have always been, I think, kind defenders of each other online. Yes. Yes, we stick together and defend one another. Because look, I only receive backlash because I'm outspoken. You do realize it's generally not speaking that gets people in trouble, it's the content of what you say. But she was recently listed by The Rap as one of the trailblazers for the uh, Polish power list. Oh no, sorry, sorry, I read that wrong. It's an honor to be recognized in a way that celebrates our heritage. Do you speak the language? Does it matter? Does it matter? Do you eat the food? Does it matter? Just became a conversation about how many different ways there are to be a Latin descent. But I have learned the hard way that we have to be fearless and loud in order to be heard. Like when she was sharing videos about how much you should hate men. Which is extremely weird when in this same interview we get this comment. Because it's hard being women under the spotlight. People are so critical. And just say anything that they would never say to your face. Wait, wait, no. I think I've already got the excuse. I think I know what you're about to say. It's okay when I do it. At the end of the day, this is a story of representation. And it matters. <laughs> I would be willing to fight a little. Because I, because that's who I am as a person. Ah, I get it. I think I got the rules now. So you only uh, cause a problem, then somebody says you have a problem, and then you respond to them, and that's okay, right? There's there's always such chatter around it. and yeah. You only go out and attack people when they've complained specifically about you. So what then is your excuse when you went after Gina Carano? I, I, this, I mean, I'm struggling here. Gina Carano calls out Rachel's hypocrisy after the actress engaged in a hate campaign against her. But when people are calling out the problems that you're causing with your own actions, you tweet out, I hope the world becomes kinder. There's a very strange comment in this interview. As much as you'd like to remind people verbally yeah. that being in the spotlight doesn't absolve you of your humanity. Like when she was sharing videos about how much you should hate men. That you're allowed to have human moments. Big focus on her love story with a guy who literally stalks her. Weird. Weird. It doesn't necessarily do what you want it to do and it fuels yeah. them more. Do you speak the language? Does it, matter? Does it matter? Do you eat the food? Does it matter? This has got nothing to do with caring about someone's humanity. This is, you're causing a problem. You should stop that. Why have you come along and are destroying things that people like? Because you know that people like them. I mean, definitely pressure. The cartoon's so beloved. It's like a monumental moment in film history. And yet the moment they say, what are you doing? You're destroying this thing and you seem to be ever so pleased with yourself for doing it. You even think it's a major part in history just to improve your own ego. And obviously for my community, it's a huge moment. I mean so much to an entire continent of people. But when people go like, like, what are you doing? Suddenly, no, I've got to avoid them. I've got to ignore them. I've got to become Teflon because I'm I'm earning a lot of money. Thankful for those moments mm -hmm. because it started to make me feel like solid Teflon. <laughs> I have a lot of love in my life. Yes. And I'm very thankful. She's not going to be dreaming about true love. She's dreaming about becoming the leader she knows she can be. <laughs> Snakes, of course. You should be kind to me because I mean so much to a conceptual group I've made up over there. It's not that people doubt somebody's humanity. It's that people don't care about how much you think you mean to a hypothetical person that you've made up in your own head. And obviously for my community, it's a huge moment. Snow White is a huge moment for them, as is the Hunger Games. And if they did exist, that's not a reason to destroy the movie in the first place, is it really? <laughs> oh, well, this person likes it. Yeah, but these people don't. Well, we don't care about them because that one likes it. How are you weighting the importance of these people? Because I think I know, I'd just like you to say it. The people of Poland can sleep so soundly in their beds now you're Snow White. She wants people to conform to her, to be kinder around her and let her say and do whatever she wants without any repercussions. I think Drunk 3PO got that bang on, really, didn't he? You think that you're so vital to the world that it doesn't matter what damage you do in the process. Ever so important that you take the role from somebody who should have been there. Because your bank balance increasing means more to the world than theirs for some reason, even though they'd fit the part better. And I am putting out a movie. Amen. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Now this attitude of blaming people who are just pointing out that you've done something wrong is a very common one in Hollywood. In fact, it's their main tactic that has been used multiple times before. Some of the fan base just sickened me to my stomach. You're no Star Wars fan in my mind. All of the people were angry. Like. Uh. Those people. Very the Star Wars fan base really seems to be the most kind of toxic. There's a word for it, actually. That's gaslighting. 
That's what it is. But there's another layer of cope that we can paste on to fill the cracks in our ego. That actually, we're not causing any problems at all. They're not pointing out problems that we're causing. No, they're just having a really bad time. They are probably just having a really hard day. Yes. Because we're making things that make people connect with one another. Like when she was sharing videos about how much you should hate men. And there are people out there who say things that make people want to not come together. Make people want to fight. Gina Carano calls out Rachel's hypocrisy after the actress engaged in a hate campaign against her. And there are people out there who say things that make people want to not come together. It's not our egos that are the problem. It's, it's actually theirs, you see. They're just insecure. Who hurt you? I mean, we couldn't be doing anything wrong. Everybody has always wanted a Polish person in West Side Story. We evolved to a place where we were properly representing the people that the story is about. I'm a Puerto Rican. Is that okay? And so you know what I'll do? You know the voluntary effort that I will go to just to enhance the world. I mean, I'm already, I've already done a lot of enhancing of the world and improving the universe, the energy in the universe, just by increasing my bank balance, acting in a movie for a bit. But I'm going to do it again. I am going to prove myself better than they are by realizing that they don't matter. We get to do our work and, and have that speak for itself instead. Yeah. All the audience, the paying customers, they don't matter. We should just ignore all of those. Probably, I mean, that could be one reason why her movies keep flopping at the box office. Does it matter? When you blame the audience for the problems that you've caused, it's not going to really endear them to give you their hard-earned money. Currency they gained from the sweat of their own brow compared to uh, sitting awkwardly in a harness. It hurts. It hurts. As a girl, it's like all up in it's your business. It's all up in the business. Yeah, that might be the weirdest comment in the entire interview. Oh, it's all up in your junk. Oh, it's all up in there. Love, you've got nothing there. If you think it's bad for you, imagine being a bloke. Actually, this is Hollywood. I should probably be a bit more specific. Imagine being a bloke who hasn't expanded to three times the normal human size, and therefore, as a consequence of um, how he got there, had everything shrunk. As then I imagine the harness is a little bit easier to use. But even then, still a lot harder for him than it is for you. Oh no, it's on my thigh. <laughs> so of course there's like this pressure of having to bring to life the first one. But they were right about one thing. It is very difficult to understand their point of view, largely, because it only benefits them. We try and dress it up as, oh, it actually benefits these hypothetical people. But really, it's about, I want to come up with an argument that gives me more roles. So of course I need more people that look like me in more movies because then only I can fill that spot in those extra movies and get paid even more money. It's all self-interest. But for some reason we're going to try and present ourselves as if we represent an entire continent of people, all of which are different from different backgrounds and cultures. They have different beliefs and values and yet for some reason we're supposed to think that Rachel Zegler, someone born in America with Polish ancestry, is just supposed to be just like an entire continent of people who have different cultural upbringings than she did. All in all, it's a very, very strange way of thinking. But it's because it's not supposed to make sense. It's supposed to be an excuse. An excuse that's made up to increase the bank balance. Now, of course, there would be other ways that you could get roles. You could be really talented. But the issue is there's plenty of other talented people in the world, and that means you've got to compete on a level playing field. And so if you can convince the Hollywood casting directors that, no, I need to be in this role, and there's only like me and a few other people that could be, then it makes your career so much easier. And it's very interesting that we're talking about Snow White, where when it was announced, Peter Dinklage came out and made sure that seven other dwarves couldn't get jobs. No, we don't need the dwarves in that movie anymore. I don't need people being in successful movies that aren't me. That would be seven people who have now become more well-known actors that would then compete with me for the roles that I want to take. Have I not done enough to advance the cause from my soapbox? I guess I'm not loud enough. I mean, if you'd put a cool and progressive spin on the fairy tale, he personally would have been all in on it. If you'd made a place for me to be in the movie, then maybe it would have been okay. And it made Disney come out and respond and say to avoid reinforcing stereotypes, we're taking a different approach with the seven characters. Well, that different approach turned out to be uh, CGI. You yeah, don't need to give seven other people acting roles. Your job's safe, Peter. We'll just fake them instead. That way we're not reinforcing anyone. No one's calling us a bigot. And everyone can still be safe in the knowledge that they're the only ones grifting in the industry. This is greed dressed up as virtue, and they have the gall to try and make the people who are pointing it out look like the baddies. Except the thing is, Hollywood, this isn't the 90s. People have access to all the information, and it's a lot harder to pull the wool over people's eyes when uh, they know what you've said before. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe for more videos in the future, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.